red blood cells are formed inside the bone marrow of our body from special stem cells known as hematopoietic stem cells. Now, once the red blood cells are formed, they are released into the blood plasma, into our blood circulation of our cardiovascular system. Now, once the red blood cells are fully formed, they are terminally differentiated, and that means they will not divide, they will not undergo mitosis again during their lifetime. Now, the main function of red blood cells is to carry oxygen. So red blood cells contain many, many hemoglobin proteins inside the cytoplasm and these hemoglobin proteins inside the red blood cells are responsible for picking up that oxygen inside the lungs and dropping, delivering that oxygen to the tissues of our body. Now, as with any other cell in our body, these red blood cells age with time. And what that means is with time, as they collide with other cells of our blood, with the walls of the capillaries, and as they squeeze through the tiny capillaries of our body, they are damaged and eventually they must be destroyed, they must be broken down, and they must be recycled in special areas of our body. Now, there are three places where red blood cells are generally recycled and broken down. It's inside our liver, inside the lymph nodes, and also inside an organ known as the spleen. The spleen is an organ found in close proximity to our stomach, and it not only stores blood in our body, but it also breaks down the red blood cells. Now, recall that some factors that increase the rate of production of red blood cells in our body are exercise, exposure to high altitude, hemolytic diseases, damage to the bone marrow, low hemoglobin concentration or content in our blood, and all these things not only lead to the increase in production of red blood cells, but because we also produce more red blood cells, that implies we also have to break down more red blood cells as a result. So these also can increase the rate of destruction of these red blood cells. So let's focus, let's discuss on how and where these red blood cells are actually broken down and what recycled components are formed as a result. Now, red blood cells can generally live up to 120 days before they are damaged to the point where they must be recycled in our spleen, in our liver, or in our lymph nodes. And the rate at which, the average rate at which our body breaks down, recycles these red blood cells is about 2.5 million red blood cells every single second. So every single second, our liver our spleen and the lymph nodes break down and recycle 2.5 million red blood cells. Now, this actually seems like a lot, but it's not if we remember that our body contains about 25 trillion red blood cells circulating in our blood circ uh, circulation system. Now, 90% of these red blood cells that are damaged are recycled in our spleen, in our liver, and in our lymph nodes by specialized white blood cells known as macrophages. And the remaining 10% of those red blood cells actually lice, they break open directly in the blood, in our blood circulation as a result of being damaged by some other type of factor. So for example, when our red blood cells age and when they become very fragile, if they are squeezed through that very tight capillary, they can actually lyse and by lysing, they release the components to the blood plasma of our cardiovascular system. So about 10% of the red blood cells lyse and this process is known as hemolysis directly in our blood circulation. Their remnants are eventually picked up by the macrophages as we'll see in just a moment. Now, the majority of the aged or damaged red blood cells 
end up in our spleen, in our liver, or in our lymph nodes, and the white blood cells we call macrophages, which are phagocytic cells, essentially engulf, digest, and recycle the different components of red blood cells. So to summarize what we described and to discuss how this process takes place, let's take a look at the following diagram. So let's begin in region number one so this is our bone this is the bone marrow and inside the bone marrow our hemopoietic stem cells essentially form red blood cells those red blood cells mature they end up being released into our blood plasma so red blood cells are released into our blood now, after about 120 days of circling our cardiovascular system, they essentially are damaged to the point where they either lice directly in our blood or they go into our spleen, into our liver, or end up in the lymph nodes and the white blood cells engulf those damaged red blood cells and form this vacuole inside that combines with the lysosomes of the macrophage and the lysosomes contain digestive proteolytic enzymes that can break down the red blood cells. Now, notice when hemolysis of the blood cell takes place inside our blood, the uh, content of our red blood cell is spilled into the blood plasma. Now, what are the contents of the red blood cell? Well, the red blood cell doesn't have any organelles. It doesn't have any nucleus. What it does have is a ton of hemoglobin proteins. And so these hemoglobin proteins are released into our blood plasma. Now, the hemoglobin proteins, as well as the remnants of the red blood cell that lies, can be either picked up by the macrophage circulating in our blood plasma, or it ends up being released by the kidneys to the outside environment. So let's focus on the macrophage and what happens inside the macrophage. So let's suppose the macrophage either engulfs the red blood cell or picks up the remnants of the lysed uh, red blood cell that was found in the blood plasma. Either way, the recycling uh, process begins to actually take place. So the main component of the red blood cell are these hemoglobin proteins. So this describes the recycling of hemoglobin inside the macrophage. So essentially what happens is our hemoglobin consists of a heme group that contains an iron atom and it also contains of the protein component, the globin. So what happens is the globin protein component is broken down into its constituents amino acids and the heme group is broken down into the iron atom as well as that heme. Now the iron and the amino acids can either remain inside the cell and be used by that cell or they go into our blood plasma and then travel back into the bone marrow where the bone marrow reuses these recycled materials to form more red blood cells. Now amino acids can actually travel in the blood plasma by themselves but this iron has to be carried by a special protein carrier known as a transferrin. So transferrin carries the Fe atom to the bone marrow or if the Fe remains in that cell, it can be used by that cell for some type of process. Now, what about the heme group? Well, the heme group is ultimately broken down and form and broken down and transformed into something called uh, bilirubin. And bilirubin eventually exits and enters the blood plasma where it travels into the liver and the liver either transfers that bilirubin into our kidneys or it combines it with the bile that is excreted into the intestines where the bile combines with our remnants of whatever we ingest and eventually is excreted by the large intestine of our body. So this is the process by which we produce our red blood cells and we also destroy those red blood cells and recycle those red blood cells so that we can reuse some of the components to form more red blood cells in our bone marrow. So to summarize, red blood cells are formed in our our bone marrow and they are recycled, they are broken down by macrophages in either
either the liver, the spleen or our lymph nodes. About 90% of the red blood cells are engulfed by those macrophages, but about 10% of those red blood cells as a result of some type of strain, some type of force or some type of pressure, for example, a collision with the wall of the capillary, that can cause about 10% of those red blood cells to actually lice directly inside our blood plasma. And the remnants of that lysing process are picked up by the macrophage or the hemoglobin can actually travel to the kidneys where the kidneys essentially excretes that hemoglobin.